Today, I'm gonna attempt another TikTok trend. It's not really a TikTok trend, but I've been seeing it online on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube for like a year. So today we're gonna try to make this dress. It's basically just like a mini dress with a ruched bust and it has these little strap ties and it's super cute. Plus, I love a good challenge, so I made my dress out of this thrifted dress that I found for $1. But if you wanna make this from scratch out of fabric, you can use all the same dimensions that I'm gonna give you and just make it from scratch. I don't have the dimensions yet, so we're gonna to have to figure all that out. So we got our work cut out for us. I'm gonna take some body measurements, then we're gonna start cutting and sewing. All right, measurement time. This is my least favorite thing to do on camera, so let's just do it. Um, so I'm gonna measure my bust, and then I'm gonna measure my upper bust as well as my waist to thigh measurement and my hips. And this is the widest part of your hips. Some people it's your butt, some people it's not. And last, I'm gonna measure my waist. Then I realized I ran out of brain capacity, so I went and grabbed a notebook to write all of my measurements down. And I drew a self-portrait, looking good. And I wrote all of my measurements on my self-portrait, looked a little something like that. And now we're done. Time to draft the pattern. This pattern is so easy to draft, I'm not even joking. So this is the front bodice, and we're gonna cut it on the fold, so drawing that on there. Okay, so the width should be your waist measurement divided by four plus ease. Now, what is ease? Is it that black mold that's growing up the side of my house? No, it is that scrunched effect on the bodice that you see right there. So we need to leave extra room for that. So I left two and a half inches for ease plus seam allowance. I forgot to write that on there. Don't forget the seam allowance. And the length of the bodice should be eight inches because that's roughly the distance from my neckline to my waistline plus seam allowance plus hem allowance. So that ended up being like one and a half inches. And last but not least, there's this little two inch dip in the corner that will fit the armpit. Okay, so now let's draft that out. This line is for my waist. I made mine 11 inches. And then these vertical lines are nine and a half inches long. And this is for the length of my bodice. And now I'm connecting those lines into a perfect rectangle. And then I'm gonna remind myself to cut this on the fold. And then I'm gonna make a little dot where I want my neckline to end. So that's gonna be my neckline. And then I'm gonna make a dot where I want my armpit to end. And then I'll connect those with a little diagonal line. And now we'll cut it out. So simple. And the last thing I'm doing here is drawing lines where my seam allowance will go. So half an inch all around and then one inch at the top for the hem. So then I'll label it. And now we'll move on to the back bodice. It's literally a square, it's so easy. The width should be your waist measurement divided by four plus seam allowance. And then the height should be the same height as your front bodice, but I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so the width of my back bodice was 8.75 inches wide and seven and a half inches tall. I'm gonna remind myself to cut this on the fold and then I'm gonna draw my seam allowance all around. Okay, so here's what I was talking about earlier. You wanna make sure the front bodice and the back bodice match at the side seam. And this is why I like drawing out my seam allowance because this helps me envision where my seams will go and make sure that everything will match up in the end. So now I'll cut it out and we're done. Okay, moving on to the fun part. Before I start cutting, I'm just making sure I have enough room for my bodice and the skirt and a little room at the end to cut my straps. And I did have enough room, so now I'm just gonna cut my bodice out. So there's my front bodice, and then I'm gonna flip the fabric over and cut my back bodice on the fold. And it's just a little rectangle. And if you notice, on the back of the skirt, there is this little slit. So I'm gonna try to close that slit up. So I'm gonna take my little seam ripper and seam rip the little seam that goes around that slit so that now that edge can lay nice and flat and I'm just gonna top stitch that down. As if that slit never happened, I'm just gonna close it. Now, let me just tell you the skirt measurements. Super easy, it looks a little something like this. So the length of the skirt should be 22 inches plus hem allowance, and that's gonna hit right about mid thigh. So you just cut that accordingly. And the width of the waist should be the waist divided by four plus seam allowance. You know the drill. And I'm also gonna make sure to leave room for my hips plus seam allowance, plus ease. So my waist was 8.7 inches wide, and then I measured down roughly nine inches where my hips will be, and I had just enough room to make mine about 11 inches wide. And then I'm gonna measure down to the hemline, 
23 inches and draw a nice straight line. And then I'm gonna draw a slanted line going all the way down. This was an actual miracle that I had the perfect amount of room. Can you believe that? And then I'll lay the other side of the dress down and I'm gonna lay down that skirt that I just cut out and I'm just gonna trace it perfectly around. So now I have a back skirt panel and I have a front skirt panel. Okay, and last but not least, we're almost done. I seam ripped the hem off of the bottom of the dress just so I can have a little extra room to cut my straps. I needed as much room as I could have. And then I measured out my straps two and a half inches wide. And in the end, I had four straps that were 24 inches long and two and a half inches wide. Yay! We made it. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. I'm using my pride and joy today, my singer quantum stylist, and we're just gonna start doing a little hem action. So I'm gonna do a simple double fold hem on the top of the front bodice, and I'm just gonna top stitch that down. And I'm about to put half an inch elastic through there, so make sure to leave room for that. And if you notice, there's a little opening here, perfect, for us to put the elastic. So I'm just gonna put some elastic on a safety pin and I'm gonna feed that safety pin through the top. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna scrunch our little bodice up and just make it look all cute. Okay, once we have it where we want it, we're gonna sew a little seam here just where the elastic is on both sides. And this is just gonna secure that elastic in place. So I'm just sewing back and forth, back and forth. And then we can trim off that elastic Look at that. And now we can hem this poor little scraggly looking edge here just for the armpit. I don't know how it got so beat up. Now reflecting back, I probably should have left like one inch for the hem allowance because I was struggling here sticking with my half an inch. I don't know what I was thinking, but either way, I got it folded down and I top stitched it down. And now it's done. Okay, in the moment we've all been waiting for, I'm gonna switch my stitch length all the way up, as far up as it will go. And we're gonna do a little basting stitch on the bottom of the bodice. Now with a basting stitch, you don't wanna back stitch at the beginning and end like you normally would because this is technically supposed to be like a temporary stitch. And then I'm gonna do another basting stitch right above that one. And then this is so fun. All you do is grab onto those little tails and you bunch the fabric up toward the middle of the bodice. So make sure you leave tails on the end. The first time I did this, I did not leave tails. Okay, and you wanna bunch it up until it's your waist measurement divided by two. And mine was perfect. No, no need for applause, stop. Okay, and the very last thing we're gonna do here is hem the back bodice. So I'm just doing a double fold hem again and then top stitching it down. And now we have this beautiful little hemmed edge. Okay, ooh, my hair looks bad. Okay, we are just rocking and rolling. We have the front done, we have the back done. So now we just need to connect the back to the front of the dress and then we're gonna connect the skirt. And then at the very end, we'll do the straps. But one little thing, we definitely need to put a zipper on this because she's gonna be tight. She's gonna be pretty tight. The only thing is, I don't know if we're gonna need to put like a seven to nine inch zipper or like a 20 inch zipper on this bad boy. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sew everything together down the right side. So down the right side of the bodice, down the right side of the skirt. And then I'm just gonna kind of pin it together and try it on and see how tight it is. So then I'll know what kind of zipper I'm gonna need. Did that make sense? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna lay my back bodice on top of the front bodice and I'm gonna pin it down. We're leaving the left side open. Don't forget to leave that open. So I'm just gonna sew those pieces together and then I'll do the same thing for my skirt. So I'm gonna pin the right side of the skirt together. And then for the left side of the skirt, I'm definitely gonna have a zipper like roughly there. So I'm gonna sew like the bottom three fourths of the skirt. this looks so cute. I loosely just pinned the bodice to the skirt so obviously that line is gonna look much cleaner when I actually sew it but it fits so nicely. I'm definitely gonna put a zipper right here. So nine inches. So the seven to nine inch invisible zipper will be perfect. The only thing is I don't have a blue one so we're gonna go on a little field trip and get a blue one. Ah this is so cute! Going on a field trip, going on a field trip. Here's the real question. Are we gonna go to the fabric store or are we gonna go to Michael's? 
Michael's, Michael's the fabric, the fabric store. store. I'm gonna go to the fabric store. Support local, you know? Um, this camera's blocking like 80% of my vision. <laughs> Millennial problems. Well, I just had so much self-control, didn't get any fabric, but I got my zipper. Cutie little guy. All right, well, let's just go home and uh, finish this thing. Okay, it's really happening. I'm gonna put the bodice down on top of the skirt and I overlapped it by half an inch and then I'll lay the zipper down and I'm just trying to measure how far down the zipper is gonna go. So I'll make a mark at the end of the zipper and now we can close that little gap in the skirt right up to where the zipper will end. So I'm gonna sew that down and leave the top edge open. Okay, so now I'm gonna lay the bodice down on top of the skirt, right sides together, matching it up at the sides. And I'm gonna match the side seam of the bodice with the side seam of the skirt, just so that that line looks perfect. And I'm just gonna pin going inward. You might need to bunch it up a little more or pull it out a little more. Just work with it until it's perfect and fits all the way around. So then I'm just gonna sew that together at half an inch seam allowance. Okay, I'm not emotionally ready for this, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the zipper on. So first, I'm gonna cut off these little fuzzies. Also, side note, if you have a serger, definitely use a serger or a zigzag stitch to prevent all of these frayed edges. I'm just doing the bare minimum here for this tutorial. Place the zipper down. So I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna place it down right sides together. And then I'll flip the other side over to where it's also right sides together. And I'm folding that little tabby thing down at the top. I don't know if that's proper to do, but there's a lot of things in this video that's not proper to do, but we're just rolling with it. So then I'm just gonna sew this zipper down so that when we fold it in, it will be all nice and hidden. And now I'm gonna take out my zipper foot. This came with the sewing machine and this makes putting a zipper on so much easier. So I'm just gonna slow and steady sew my little zipper on and I hated every second of this, just so you know. But we have a functioning invisible zipper and I'm just so proud of myself. Okay, and the last thing I'm gonna do is fold these straps in half, right sides together, and I'm gonna press them down and then just sew them along their long edges hot dog style. And you wanna make sure to close one of the ends of the ties and then leave the other side open. Okay, we've arrived at my most favorite part. Just kidding, this is always my least favorite part. We need to flip our straps inside out. Okay, I'm gonna show you a little trick. So the safety pin trick doesn't work if one of the ends is closed. So I'm gonna take this knitting needle and I'm just gonna like push it through the closed end so that it kind of folds over itself. And you want to be gentle, don't poke a hole through your fabric. It's a little... I think I just poked a hole. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna use the not sharp side. Okay, so I'm just pushing it, pushing it. Come on! Okay, just pushing it through itself. Now, okay, then you're just gonna drop the needle out and yay, we have our strap. And then if you want to go the extra mile, poke the pokey end back through. Use it to kind of push out these corners. I did poke a tiny hole. Can you see that tiny hole I poked? No one will ever know. All right, once that's done, I'm just gonna lay the straps onto my dress and I'm just gonna top stitch them on and I'm just gonna sew back and forth a few times and it should look a little something like that. So now the only thing left to do is hem this dang dress. And I just did a simple double fold hem, you know the drill. And I'm just gonna top stitch that little baby down and we are done. Can you believe it? I am so happy with how this dress turned out. The little strap ties are so cute. Full transparency, I think this fabric that I used is kinda ugly, but you know, you live and you learn. So this is me just waving goodbye. Just know that I'll miss you and I love you. I don't know you, but I think I love you and I'll see you next time. Bye!